You know, Betty, there's something very relaxing about chasing butterflies. It takes my mind off of the camp spirit. Oh, that old pest, always coming around camp this time, makes people all crazy. What is it, Cherry? <gasps> I see a butterfly. Where? Right there. <laughs> Campers, welcome to Camp Hoodle. Drop and give me 20. 20! 20! <laughs> Did I say use your hands? No hands! <laughs> Welcome, campers, to Camp Hootaho Arts and Crafts! Today, we're gonna make a God's Eye. And by God's eye, I mean Dreamcatcher. And by Dreamcatcher, I mean a nucleoid reactor. Powered by the sun and wind turbine. Battery operated by children's Christmas tears of disappointment. No scissors! All right, campers, here we go. You're just gonna shoot her right in the middle. Just hit that apple. Don't move. Hit it, hit it! Get her, get her, get her! Wake up, Betty. Wake up. Right in the center. You've had this coming a long time, Betty. Just right through the core. <laughs> you better wake up. Yeah. Wake up, Betty. Wake up. Wake up, Betty. Wake up. Wake up, Betty. Wake up. Wake up, Betty. Oh, oh. oh Cherry. I had the most awful vision. We were at Camp Hudaho, and Ruthie was there, and we had the most horrible camp counselor. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, Betty, I think that might be the camp spirit acting up again. <gasps>
Apparently, oh, there she is. Yeah. Good to see you. I do declare. <laughs> Can anybody bring pen and paper? Oh, you know what? I brought my notebook. Um, oh. <laughs> like a Boy I'm so happy they said it was just one solid team. Right. Because we all work very well as a team, mm -hmm. I think. I think so too. Yes. How many somersaults in the air do we think that I need to do? Uh, at least four. seven. 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 I was thinking oh, minimum seven. Yeah, lucky that's seven. my goal. Okay, lucky yes, seven. Lucky seven or nothing. One for each of us. Okay, well, great. I can tell you one thing. If I have to do a death drop, it's probably going to be a real one. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, so Kitty, I know that you had an idea. What was I your did, idea? Well, I'm going to throw this at you, and if y'all don't, Love it. My feelings won't be too hurt. Maybe a little bit. But not. <laughs> so, so it's like here at Camp Wana Kiki, the campers and the staff, we're gonna do our very best to try and make you laugh. My makeup it is busted. My hair it is a mess. And something funny's going on. It's underneath my dress. Yeah. Yeah. Please, let's go have a drink. Yes. Oh my gosh! Too hey, hard. Hey, For me to like write a cheer on the spot like that. Like, yeah. I can't be funny just because you told me to be funny like right now. Yeah. It's very intimidating. <laughs> Thank you for doing the mini okay. challenge for us. So, team yeah. captain. Team yeah. captain. Right? So team we got it all work. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I think that... Um, Can I just say I think that this is racist that the woman has to be writing things down? <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? You're the only man. You're not How alive. is that racist? First of all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Are you saying that I am not a woman? <laughs> Do you guys think we should add anything into them about into the group about the campers that have gone home just to like being a part in. of everything? <laughs> I don't know. If they're and you're really with miss that our friends. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Ready? Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Girl, ready? I... Okay. Oh! oh! Write that in the beginning. <laughs> Time to turn the party out at Camp Wanakiki. Oh, queen. Sounds pretty good. So far, great. great. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't written already. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks to Kitty. Thanks yeah. to Kitty. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be doing a literal death drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dear didn't bring her inhalers. So. Yeah. <laughs> Poor dear. Was anybody here a cheerleader in high school or? Diana College? failed at it. I was in the marching Diana band. Diana failed at it. <laughs> oh. I flunked out how to become a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Is know. there some paddling going on in yeah. here? I don't know what's happening. That's, 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 that's <laughs> Okay, well, you've got about 10 minutes okay. Okay. to get your oh, routine right. down, so I will leave you to it. Let's go to honest feet, honest feet, honest feet. Okay, okay. So oh. audience will be that way. Yeah? Yeah. And let's figure out where we're coming in. Okay. So what will happen is... Why are you acting brand new? <laughs> let's scoot back up. Alright, so let's pretend Mark. So, okay. okay. So I'll count us out with like five, six, seven, eight. Alright, hold. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we did is, so once yeah, Claire got in place, she stopped and turned and we kept marching until the last person got in place and stopped. Yeah. Show me again. What foot are we starting with? Left foot. Left foot. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna try it again? Instructions are hard. Try it again? Yeah. How many By the way, if it's taking us this long to figure out how to walk, we have a lot of work to go on the board. <laughs> <laughs> five, That's five six, five, six, seven, and... Let's break off and figure out our own choreography. For okay, sure. Okay, campers, show us what you got. Five, six, five, six, seven, and...
I really like the teamwork. The teamwork I was absolutely great. love the teamwork. And can I just say that that group of white girls would not have been able to keep any rhythm without you. Oh my gosh, thank you. I know stop clap can be rough sometimes. For for the rest of us, <laughs> yes. Kitty. Bro, oh, thank goodness for Kitty. They said, and your 30 minute star is now. And Kitty goes, blah. Here's the full three verses. Three verse, verse cheer. Three, like she wrote it down word for word. I mean, it was amazing, and it was perfect. Honestly, just crown her now, I am not upset. Oh, wow, campers, who knew you were such good queer leaders? Woo! Brilliant, brilliant, that was amazing. How did you campers come up with that amazing cheer in such short time? Yay! Oh, y'all, I'm as happy as a prick on a porcupine right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this goes to prove that teamwork really makes the dream work. Yes. Yeah. All right, campers. So it's almost time for you to get ready for tonight's talent show. So on your way, just be careful because things might get a little spooky. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Today our campers are earning their camp spirit badges. Earlier today, our camp queer leaders dazzled us with their amazing cheer routine. And tonight, our creepy little campers will be telling us their campfire ghost stories. Seven campers into the talent show stage. But only six will survive. <laughs> spooky, spooky. The Great Drag Famine left the world with thousands of drag performers, but only a handful of venues to work at. The drag artists who didn't starve from lack of attention have had to learn to survive in this strange new world. To maintain balance, the drag purge was written into law. Once a year, all drag artists are allowed to fight to the death with no consequences. Alliances were formed, resulting in the drag monsters, pageant queens, gender benders, and comedy queens being the four most powerful groups. Only Diana Fire, capable of all four styles of drag, could put an end to the purge. But when the world needed her most, she was stabbed in the fucking head with a stiletto. Who does that? Anyway, a hundred years had passed, and a new generation of queens have summoned Diana's spirit to help negotiate a new peace treaty. They performed the ritual with conviction, knowing they were risking everything if they weren't successful. The time had come for the sacrificial offering. The queens admitted that without a sponsor, the best they could offer were three drink tickets. Diana's bloody head spun around and she said, Bitch, my booking fee was $150 back when I was alive. You think I'm gonna come back to this plane and help you out for drink tickets? I'm dead, I can't even get drunk, bitch. Hell nah, I'm out. The curse of beauty and hate combined. My name was Madeline. I wish I could show you what I was. There are so many reasons behind what I did and why I'm here. My grandmother was born in 1896. She always told me that I was special, unique, not like the others, and that I was full of color and beauty. She died when I was 18. It was then I discovered how frightening the world can truly be and how different I was. The day of her funeral, something had changed. They changed, all of them. They looked at me with hatred. I was full of color, bright, beautiful lights then, and their world was black and white. I was a rainbow that they wanted to kill. They hid me away, locked me away from the world, from myself, imprisoned me for being myself. They forced me to conform. They forced me to wear their masculine clothes. Their effort to make me feel straight was more like a straitjacket. They called me names. Sissy, faggot, pansy, queer, gay. They forced me to not be me, starving me, destroying me, wanting me to die. 
Their society was killing me. My inner light was blown out. As I lay there dying, crying out for the love of my world, my lost world of color and happiness, I looked at what I had become, what they made me into. I didn't exist anymore. I lost me. I saw it, light, a beautiful beam of light, an angel from heaven. And then I saw it through that light, my grandmother. A beautiful rainbow, a warm feeling flooded over me. I felt love, I felt acceptance, I felt wanted. I was finally happy again. I was me. I always wanted me, then that was enough. I looked into her beautiful, loving eyes. I took her hand. And now, if you ever feel lost and need a light or a rainbow in your life, call for Madeline. Madeline. And you will never, never lose yourself. Queens, have you ever lost a beloved wig only to find it months later shoved in the bottom of some long forgotten bag or suitcase? Well, before you put it on, sit back and listen to my cautionary story, the harrowing tale of the wig from the bottom of the bag. The year was 1953. I was 17 years old and my grandmother had just passed away. In her attic, I found a most glorious handcrafted dollhouse, a perfect replica of my grandmother's five-bedroom Victorian. Every detail painstakingly recreated, from the clawfoot tub in the master bath to the chintzy wallpaper in the sitting room. Also, I found an old Avon bag, overflowing with the most gorgeous dollhouse accessories. And then at the bottom of the bag, a nasty, ratted up old wig. A complete mess. It was obvious nobody had coiffed her in ages. And yet, there was still an undeniable charm in the way she just laid there, inanimately chillaxing among the tiny furniture, begging me to put her on. So I did. I gave in and gave that beautiful hot mess my head. I turned slowly to face the mirror, feeling my oats. But what I saw was horrifying. I was now made of porcelain. Soon, the dollhouse with me inside was sold to a little girl named Apple Brown Betty. Betty gave me a wonderful life until she grew and stopped playing with me. Eventually, Betty had a daughter of her own and I was once again a beloved playmate until she too outgrew the dollhouse. And so the cycle has continued for the past 60 odd years, loved and discarded, cherished then abandoned, a never ending loop of heartache and daddy issues. So let this be a lesson to you all, never neglect a wig. They are prime vessels for the darkest of magic. And if you're not careful, you could end up just like me, a sad old queen stuck forever with unarticulated elbows. Hey bras, you wanna hear a spooky story? Gather around and grab a cold one. It all started the summer I went endangered animal hunting in Africa. My girlfriend, Jessica, came back from college I was really excited when I sent my driver to pick her up from the airport. But when he got there, she was nowhere to be found. Ugh. So I had to drive my Beamer because my Tesla was getting a rim job. So I pull up to the airport, Terminal C, and she was flying Spirit. I look around, I see a few poor people and some random girl with, oh God, a buzz cut? I looked closer, and to my horror, it was Jessica. Her luggage didn't match, and it had a pink sticker on it. She got in the car, reeking of patchouli and wearing Birkenstocks. She had a tank top on, and I could see hair under her arms. She looked at me, and I knew it. I could see it as clear as gay. I mean, day. 
Jessica was a pussy hat wearing, muff diving, pro feminist dyke. The so boys, don't let what happened to me happen to you. Keep your women at home. Don't educate her and never let her think she's your equal. August Rain. That's the beautiful and cryptic password to the gates of a rainbow island full of smiling happy people called Kerala. Not the one with bears. Muscle bears, sure, but not the real ones. The people of Kerala loved to laugh, but there was one boy who didn't know how to laugh. He tried everything, but he could not even muster a smile. As the boy grew older, he isolated himself. He found comfort in closets, especially those with hats. One day, he was trying on hats, late at night, in gentrified summer suburban homes. One home particularly caught his attention. It was an eerily silent cabin that belonged to the excommunicated clown who used to spend his days making the people of Kerala laugh. No one quite knows why he was banished, but the cabin, especially on this night, had a stiff and popping scent. Not poppers, more like nail polish and dusty boas. Inside the very first closet of the abandoned cabin was a black and white jester's hat. Once he touched it, a clown appeared. The clown said, I can make you laugh, and smiled at the boy while whispering through gritted teeth, you are not allowed to smile when you die after your first breath. The boy didn't speak, nor in his life did he ever try, but the clown smiled wider. Minutes passed, and the clown raised his hands at the boy's mouth and exclaimed, Game of Thrones has mediocre writing and predictive storylines, said no one ever. The boy, a ghost of seven long, lonely, haunted years, smiled, then released a peculiar and infant-like chuckle. The boy began to cry, mouth wide, and the clown knew the moment had come. The clown breathed a comforting and possessive story. Children who die before their first laugh are granted neither heaven nor hell. No bliss or torture, no joy or despair. Your smirk and petite chuckle are now mine, and you, small boy, shall remain here in the closet, unable to leave, and missing the next reboot of Spider-Man, much to Tom Holland's despair. However, I will leave you with this never-ending sound of the child laughter noises from Camp Wanakiki Season 1 Spooky Challenge. The clown closes the door as laughter fills the tiny closet, which is immediately overshadowed by the boys' chilling screams. Lil Debbie Donuts was known for two things. She liked to eat and she liked to swim. No, she liked to float. She was known throughout Camp Hoodahoe for never missing a meal, especially donut days. She was always first in line for mealtime and you'd always find her on the beach or floating her day away. She ignored the lifeguard's incessant attempts to get her to take swim lessons because who needed to know how to swim when you could float? One morning after stuffing her face full of donuts, Debbie was so excited to get floating out on the lake that she put sunscreen on her nose, but ignored the rest of her body. The sun was beating down hard all over Camp Hudoho that day, but little Debbie wouldn't know. She fell asleep right after pushing off the shore to float. That's exactly what she did. She floated the day away. When lunchtime rolled around and her fellow campers were shocked to not see her first in line, back out on the water the sun was glazing harsh on the lake and you could hear the growls from Debbie's stomach echo louder and more intense as the lunch hour went on. (laughs) 
Eventually, one growl got so loud that it startled little Debbie awake. To her surprise, her body started screaming in pain because the sun had fried her skin to a crisp. Quickly, the only thing she could think of to relieve the pain was to jump into the lake. The campers and lifeguards were eating without her and couldn't save her from drowning. Try as she might, she never learned to swim. And Little Debbie Donut sank to the bottom of the lake, never to eat a donut again. The next year, fresh after Donut Day at camp, two campers grabbed their donuts to go eat while floating out on the lake. As they were floating, they were startled by the sound of a stomach growl getting closer and closer to them. Two sunburnt hands reached up and grabbed them by the ankles and pulled them down to the watery depths. When their bodies were found with eyes glazed over, everybody knew it was Little Debbie Donuts. She died hungry and would always stay hungry, never to be satisfied. Nowadays, they say you can hear the growls of Little Debbie's stomach echo across the lake every day around lunchtime. It is a constant reminder to those at Camp Hudaho to never forget to wear sunscreen and don't ever go swimming until 30 minutes after you're done eating. <laughs> Out of the dark and into the light comes this blood-sucking feline on a Halloween night. Now y'all children's gather round, cause I'm about to tell y'all a tale so terrifying it gonna set your short curly hair straight on end. Now the tale I'm talking about of course is about my friend Miss Dee Dee Racula. Now y'all know Dee Dee lived at the same trailer park that I lived at just up the road a piece. Dee Dee had came into some money from cashing in those S&H green stamps and went on a trip to Europe to this place called Transylvestite. Now y'all know when Dee Dee come back she was acting mighty peculiar. She was sleep all the day and stay up all the night and her teeth got real jaggedy. We thought it was just a crystal methamphetamines. But then uh, one night I was sitting there in my bed and I heard the door slowly creak open like this. I think we need some WD-40 on that door, but it turned out Miss Dee Dee had come for a visit, and she was looking just as pale and frightening as all get out. She come up in my room, and she looked at me and says, I suck. And I said, well, that's all right, honey. That's what the critics said about my last three shows. You just pay it, no, never the mind. And then she said, I'm going to bleed you dry. And I said, oh, honey, you were a little late and a dollar short because the IRS already took care of that. And then, do you know what she did? She opened up her mouth and she went and bit me right on my neck, y'all. But what she didn't know was I had made some of my lime green jello and garlic surprise for dinner. And she crumbled the dust right in front of me. But now it's the strangest thing because I end up staying up all the night. So if you hear some kitty come scratching at your door some dark night, y'all don't answer that door because you might just get sucked dry. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry, honey, at Hamburger Mary's, the premier spot for drag queen entertainment, including our world-famous nightly Dining with the Divas drag shows and our fabulous weekend mimosa brunch. Sink your teeth into one of our mouth-watering burgers, entrees, or a variety of other menu items, and wash it all down with a signature Hamburger Mary's cocktail. Visit HamburgerMary's.com to find the location near you. Be sure to make a reservation for your next night out. Until then, eat, drink, and be merry. Wow, guys, that was a spooky, spooky talent spooky. show. This is my favorite talent show of the year. It, it is. I love it. Too, yeah. yeah. And they 
are, it's so creative. They get to do mm -hmm. their originality, both in their presentation of their looks, but also in the stories, which are so, so yeah, clever. They get to flex their writing muscle at Camp Wanakiki, and they did a great job this year. Yes, they did. And they also had the writing muscle of the Daily Challenge, which, which was, was awesome. so amazing. Uh, How they, about Kitty today? Bro, wow. Kitty Litter. Like, oh, I got something to say. And she, boom, here's a cheer. My little camping angel. <laughs> Kitty Litter, she knocked it out of the park. She did. Meow. Yeah. Yes, and as did um, Diana Fire. The I, yes, I guess did a lot of the choreography, and that was just. <laughs> I couldn't stop smiling the whole time. So how interesting, because for me, the, the two shining stars from earlier today were also my two favorite, two of my favorite stories tonight. Kitty. Well, Kitty. 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 Meow. Uh, Goosebumps. Meow. And seriously, we've been waiting for her to really step up and shine, and today she did. Boy, she never. She's Not the most polished makeup artist, but the wit, the camp. But this is the challenge where that worked in her favor. Because it was spooky. I mean, she was selling it. The story, the look was so like vintage uh, Dracula movies. I, I love the goth look on yeah. her. I thought it was terrific. That story, I and mean, you could not not <laughs> laugh at that hilarious ghost story. I couldn't stop laughing. Hers was brilliant. Well, Diana. What a little spitfire. Diana Fire just keeps bringing it. Hasn't won a challenge yet. No. No, but she's been in the top. But she has been in the top too, look, and she's just so consistent. Um, I, the look today was very cohesive with the ghost story as well, because she actually incorporated the four elements. The drag categories. The, the drag monster category. queens. She had a the monster, monster queen. Cat element, the yeah. glamour element, mm -hmm. the campy element. So the thing with, with, with Diana, because it's also very topical with drag, because right now uh, there are different categories of drag, it seems like, and people are like, oh, you're a comedy queen or you're a pageant queen, or you're a monster queen. Mm -hmm. And she's like saying, no, you can be all of them, and I'm also gonna slay you. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, she, she slayed She slayed everybody. Vivica, it was a very classic ghost story. I love that it was I... at camp, and it was something that, that kids at camp can relate to. Yes. You understood it, it had a plot that followed along and it was also clever. It was cute and it was cute. funny. She had some funny parts in there. I agree. It was like the perfect camp story yeah. for Camp Wanakiki. I mean it was it was quite it was, it was, it was quite great. cute. Let's talk about Boris. Oh yeah. Because has been doing fantastic yes. this whole competition. So witty, so clever, so so funny, so punny. Today big miss. Big, big miss in both marks. I got it, I got the political statement that he was making, um, but it wasn't a ghost story. Yeah, It, it was a, a satire on like, you know, the state of uh, feminism and sexism today or something like that. That's fine, wrap it up into a ghost story. But now we're at a point in the competition where this is gonna be the top six, this is the top half of this season of Camp Wanakiki, so you really gotta bring it every single is night. This, is this an instance with Boris that his cleverness got the best of him maybe? Like maybe he thought too much about making a clever story that no one else would do? I think, I think he was, it was just, it didn't fit the assignment. I think he was thinking out of the box a little bit too much. Let's talk very quickly about Chora. Yeah. I thought that was a very touching, lovely, oh, yeah. beautiful story. But it wasn't a ghost story. It was a story about the spirit of her grandmother coming to visit her and motivate her. And it was very touching. It was very lovely. But the thing with Torahs is there was a ghost in it. It was. It was. It, I, I agree. mean, it was technically a ghost. And story. this is a case of thinking so <laughs> far outside the box that you kind of missed the mark. But let's. But I want to talk a little bit about Coco because she won yesterday. But her gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, and she was. She looked good today too. I gorgeous. actually like the look. Uh, the story was so confusing and so complicated that I didn't really get it. I, I wanted to understand that I wasn't there for it. Was the baby dead? Was he alive? And did he die in the closet? Was he dead already? I, I, I just didn't get it. There was something about taking a breath before you laugh or something, and I just yeah. I didn't understand it. And I wanted to understand it. It was. I feel like there's a good ghost story in there that needed to be a little edited. I liked Claire's story. I, I liked too. her look. Yes, I did too. This was one where the hairy legs was a little bit distracting. It was. I mean, if you're a porcelain doll, 
but for this particular challenge, like if you're going into a course of a doll, like have stockings like shoved down in your shoes, and then when you become a course of doll, pull them up. That would have been that would have been a reveal almost. That would have been the opposite. Of reveal. It's like a conceal. I don't know. That would have been a conceal. Conceal those hair legs, Claire. We just invented something, America. Ah, I think, the drag I world. Think we got to Drag and seal. <laughs> Shook. Well, I think we we know what we're what we're about to do. I believe yeah. so. I think we're all in agreement. Yes. So. All right. Well, let's, let's call, call back our campers. The campers. You bring me a donut. The queen or king of Camp Wanakiki will take home a fabulous prize package worth nearly ten thousand dollars, including an all expense paid cruise provided by cruise planners at All Out Vacations. Check out their exciting LGBTQ groups at alloutvacations.com and click on groups. Let your cruise and land tour specialists help you discover exciting adventures around the world. A custom made one of a kind necklace and earring set designed by award winning artist Chris Jensen of C3 Designs. Handcrafted of sterling silver with jasper and pink topaz gemstones. Free burgers for a year, compliments of Hamburger Mary's, where you can eat, drink, and be merry, honey. The winner of Camp Wanakiki will also be featured as a headliner at the Austin International Drag Festival, the world's largest drag festival. All this and a great big wad of cash, too! Campers, what a spooktacular talent show tonight! Ooh! We're scared! Great show. It was very, And very also, fun. terrific job today at the camp. Camp Cheer. Yes. What <laughs> great a great job. surprise terrific, that was for us. Terrific, terrific Loved it. Everybody yes. was just phenomenal. It was just And you just all had your little parts. Delightful. It's great. So there are seven of you tonight, but there are only six Camp Spirit badges. Uh, we're gonna do something a little different uh, right now, and we want to uh, say a little something to each of you while we have you all on the stage. So Coco. Hi. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, I actually like the look. I think it's cute. Uh, the story was a bit confusing uh, and hard to follow. Yeah, usually um, with a ghost story, it has like a middle and a beginning and an end and a punchline. Um, with yours, it just left us with more questions than answers. It was apparently above my head as well because <laughs> wow. I listened to your narrative several times and I still don't get it. And I'm not kidding you, Coco. I listened to it several times and I don't know what I'm missing it just, I didn't get it. I thought there were some cute little jokes in there, um, but I'm sorry, I just didn't get it. The yeah. um, look is really, really it's cute. pretty though. Yeah, it's cute. Diana, Diana, yours, Fire. yours I loved. I loved it, I loved the look. Story was great, I think it's relatable. It, it, it referenced some pop culture movies and shows and such, but also made it about drag. Uh, and you're very funny. Who does that? Who no, does that? that? So I funny. have to say, all three of us were listening together and we all busted out <laughs> laughing yeah. when you said that. Your story tonight, your costume tonight, you just, you, you did a great job once again. Boris. Hi. Hi, hi. Um, my, you have been so amazing this entire competition. Thank You've you. won a challenge. Um, I don't believe you've ever been in the bottom. Um, been in the top a couple times. Ooh, yeah. Boris is the top. Bor yeah, I, Boris is the top. <laughs> um, <laughs> your, your story today for me was not a ghost story. I got the story. I got that that was where you were going. And it's like, um, it's not so bad to be a lesbian. But to some people, that is a horror and that's a frightening thing. Um, but I agree it wasn't a ghost story. I think you were trying to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. Um, and and which is a good thing to do. Um, I just don't think. You like going in them. But... Oh. Like going in them. <laughs> Boris. Oh, never oh. bores us. Boris never Boris bores, never bores us. us. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I think that's right. I think that most of your looks so far have been so clever, and you're trying to be the wittiest and the most clever, and yeah. oftentimes you are. This time, I think you just were a little too clever for yourself. Which nest. means it's a Claire yeah. <laughs> Little Claire Sinclair, how are you? Oh, I'm loving your face today. Thank you. I know that this is not your usual look. This isn't your usual First aesthetic. eyebrows of camp. But I, really? you look, you look oh, like yeah. a little doll. I have to say, I liked your story. Yeah. I thought it had, it was just a really cute camp classic story, you know, horror story that you would tell. Um, I thought it was adorable. Me too. I thought this story was very cute, very clever, um, very ghost story-esque. Although we appreciate the aesthetic that you uh, normally choose to not cover your legs and show your hairy legs, in this instance, 
You're going for a porcelain doll, and it, that doesn't it would have been <laughs> amazing to like be a porcelain doll. This is the one challenge we can kind of get away from your usual yeah. self a little bit, and you did. So I, I was surprised to see those gorgeous, hairy, sexy legs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great, great job. Tora back there. Hi, Hi Tora. You had us in tears. Oh, oh so, so moving and so touching. It was very touching. It, it wasn't my favorite story of the night, but it wasn't my least favorite. Um, it was very safe for me. I do love the rainbow mm -hmm. tears. And like I said, it was a very touching story. It's a little long, but. Yeah. <laughs> the blood was a nice touch as well. I also like the rainbow uh, tears. Kitty Litter, hi back there. Meow, hey kitty. Meow, meow. So your story was my favorite. It was. Thank you. Uh, it was hilarious. It was, it followed a traditional ghost story, but every step of the way, the three of us just could not stop laughing. It was, Great. It was fantastic. I mean, it was, it literally had us in stitches. I mean, just every single thing. I ain't, I hope no kitty comes scratching at my door tonight. <laughs> oh, you know? no, gonna get know. you, gonna suck you dry. Don't go, don't go, bitch. Bit my neck. No, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Terrific job from the, from the, the uh, cheer this morning to the uh, ghost story to your look tonight. I mean, it was very fitting. I mean, it's just very, very well done. It was a, it was a cat's day today. And last but certainly not least, Vivica Galactica. Hi, baby. Hello. So you are going for, is that a Donald Trump shade of orange or a bit darker? <laughs> this is a sunburn. Yeah, we don't, he who well, must so not be named. No. <laughs> Cause that's that was scary. That's... So that's natural orange then. You had me frightened right at Hudaho. <laughs> yes, that was the scariest knew part. it was gonna be scary. The dress is a little simple, but it, I mean, it goes with the theme. When you pull your glasses up, I, once you pulled them up, it was like, oh, that's hysterical. Why didn't I think that was gonna happen? I mean, it's, so it's obvious, but that's kind of what camp is to a little bit. I thought it, it was, was still a little, nice. it was a nice reveal that we weren't, mm -hmm. it was still, uh, we, and, we still got the unexpected. I have element. to say, I loved it too. I thought that was funny. And I wasn't expecting it either, and we should have expected it, but yeah. we weren't. Could have been that we were so engrossed in the story, because I loved the story. I love that it took place at a camp. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those camp legends. This happened at camp kids mm. that kids tell and don't go in the water because of, you know, it was really, really cute. I loved it. I thought the swimsuit was adorable. I loved the donuts and the boobies. Um, I'm not sure about that wig. You kind of got a little Oompa Loompa thing going on there. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Totally. Uh, I also oh, yeah. really, I loved how you, half of your body was sunburned, but the other half wasn't. I thought that was really, really funny. Thank you all once again, and thank you for indulging us with this because we really wanted to give you all some feedback and let you know that we're very proud of all of you and the work that you've done today, especially that challenge earlier today was not an easy one. Um, and this is collectively our favorite uh, of the badges. Mm -hmm. So you have made us proud today and you should be yes. very proud. So campers, I'm gonna call out a couple of names here. Claire, apparently, congratulations, you've earned your badge today. Thank you. You may wait backstage. Okay. Tora Hyman, you've also earned your Camp Spirit badge. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Vivica Galactica, congratulations, you've earned your badge today. Thank you so much. All right, so the four of you remaining are the top and the bottom. All right, let's start with the top two today. Miss Kitty Litter ATX and Diana Fire. Congratulations, you are the top. So Boris and Coco, please come way backstage. Shall we make our decision? Yes. yes. Hold the suspense no longer. Who do you have, Ruthie? I have... Kitty as the winner. Cherry. And I also have Kitty as the winner. Meow, Meow. Kitty. Congratulations, Great you're the winner today. Me. Congratulations, you've won gorgeous custom nail gloves and eye-popping paper eyelash creations to make your fantasy complete. Handmade by the drag Quinn and available on Etsy.com. Diana, amazing job for you as well. Both of you have earned your Camp Spirit badge. You may wait backstage. And might I add, we've had five challenges and six, six different winners. winners. This season is lit. Thank you guys both. I'm shook. I'm a shookin'. 
Coco and Boris, you are in the bottom this week, but we are still very proud of both of you. But unfortunately, we do not have enough badges for everyone. So Ruthie, who do you think should get the badge? Uh, this was very, very hard, um, but I did vote for Coco. And I voted for Boris. And again, this was a very tough decision. I mean, it's you both are so amazing. You're both so super campy. But the camper that I've chosen to get the last badge is Coco. Congratulations, Coco. You've earned your camp spirit badge. You may wait backstage for the badging ceremony. Boris, you are amazing. Wonderful superstar. You are a king of camp. Absolutely. Yes. You have made drag kings worldwide very proud. You've been so amazing in this competition, the looks you've brought, the stories you've told. Unfortunately, somebody has to go home, but I really don't have anything negative to say about you. And I just want to say, Boris, that you really, truly are a king of camp, and you really are a king at our heart. Yes. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity, because kings don't get it. So, thank you. you did go back to Kansas things. City with your head held high. I will. But for now, I'm sorry. You have to take a hike. I understand. I have my backpack. Oh. <laughs> Before I go, though, can I take a selfie with you guys? <laughs> Ready? I will, I will treasure it. I will treasure it. Talk the brand. Coach Co Dye. <laughs> Being sent home feels honestly terrible. <laughs> um, I can't imagine anyone would walk up here and say that it feels great. <clears throat> um, I think I'm most disappointed because that was the one look that I didn't really have much of a plan for and kind of thought that I would wing it. And unfortunately, that didn't work out for me. Being the only drag king here at camp, I am definitely proud of myself, number one, for getting here. Um, the sugar bakers and you know Ruthie never made me feel like I was a token or anything like that I always felt like I got here on my own you know like I deserved it <laughs> it was hard listening to all the girls talk about d all day long um, but uh, you know it it felt great being here it felt it was an honor to be here <laughs> very sad that I have to leave everyone um, really really gonna miss a lot of people well except Barb no I'm kidding <laughs> um, but uh, yeah no it's gonna be rough um, but I'm very happy that I met everyone my drag has definitely expanded to any friends family and fans who are watching thank you so much for your support especially of a drag king um, mostly to my mom She, my mom um, never got to see me perform and I hope that she's watching and I hope that she's proud. I have been Boris to death, that is how you say my name, Boris to death, because Facebook didn't believe me that the proper spelling is a real name and they are correct. It's Boris underscore T-U-D-E-T-H on Instagram. and everywhere else basically so um that's all for now i'm gonna keep doing the most and always remember we are family feud so i will uh see you later campers ta-ta for now I'm just gonna take my dick out into the woods bye
On your mark, get set. This isn't really a watch, by the way. And go, campers, go! Damn it. Welcome, campers. <laughs> Welcome, campers, to Camp Hootaho Arts and Crafts. All right, you're a plane. Go a little bit quicker. I am rolling and action. You know, Cherry. God damn it. I'm not Cherry. I know. You just said that. A butterfly. I see one. Where? Right there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's my butterfly. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Oh, kitty! <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Like that. Wait, open? Open fist it? No, you gotta like, like, it sounds like two vaginas slapping together. <laughs> oh, wait. Get, I, wow. Let's give him a proper demonstration. Yes. <laughs> That's a tough vagina. That's wow. Okay. okay, I'll say it and you just watermelon bubble gum it. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> Okay, here, let me actually make sure I have your focus. That's a good idea. And exposure <laughs> first, because that did not look the best. <laughs> it looked really blurry. Attention campers! You can show off your campy can-do attitude with some merchandise from Camp Wanakiki, available online. Hello, campers! It's Camp Counselor Ruthie, and if you love Camp Wanakiki as much as I do, please subscribe. Just hit that little logo right there to subscribe. Just, just hit it. Now, just go ahead, hit the logo. Now! <laughs>